Hey, learning new techniques such as signal features is only the first step. Often, the more difficult next step is understanding when and how to apply the techniques in an application. In this video, we build a simple application using many of the new signal features. We start by creating a signal-based service. This service uses Swappy, the public Star Wars API, to retrieve data and expose that data as signals. Then we build a simple component to use those signals. For reference, here's the completed application. Since we're focusing on signals, not building and styling a UI, our template is pretty basic. We have a select box that lists Star Wars vehicles. When a vehicle is selected, we display that vehicle's name and price. We have a quantity to define how many of those vehicles to purchase, and we calculate the total cost. If the user purchases enough for free shipping, we turn the total green. I'll be using Signal, Computed, Linked Signal, and Rx Resource in my solution. If you want to use this example as a project and build it on your own first, stop the video now and give it a try. Otherwise, let's build this application. I'm in StackBlitz and created a new Angular application. I'll call it Signals in Action. You could use the Angular CLI to create this application instead. I'll open main.ts. We'll need HTTP client for this application, so modify the bootstrap application method to add an options object with a provider's array. Then specify provide HTTP client. Next, let's build the vehicle service. I'll open a new terminal. Then create the service using the Angular CLI. NG for the Angular CLI, G for generate, S for service, vehicle, dash dash skip tests, will skip the tests for the sample application. That creates the basics of our service. Under the app folder, open the resulting vehicle.service.ts file. I'll close the terminal and explore for more space. Let's delete the constructor. I'll paste in the URL to the swappy list of vehicles. This only brings back the first page of vehicles, but that's good enough for our purposes. Next, we inject HTTP client. And let's define the interfaces for the swappy vehicle data. I'll paste it in to save some typing. This could be in its own file, but I'll add it here below the service class. When issuing a request for vehicle data, we get a response that includes some metadata and the results, which is our array of vehicles. In the Swappy API, each vehicle has a large set of data. We only care about the name and cost and credits. Now it's time to ask ourselves, what vehicle-related data do we need to track in our application? Here again is our planned UI. We need an array of vehicles to populate our drop-down list. We want to retain the user-selected vehicle and their entered quantity. The vehicle name and price come from the selected vehicle, so we don't need to track those separately. We calculate a total cost, so we'll need to put that calculation somewhere. And let's track a color value so we can set the color of the total based on the total amount. These are the variables we'll need to manage in our service. Let's define each of these properties as a signal. Why a signal? Because with signals, we get better change detection when binding to these values in our template. And because we can react to changes in these signals in our code. For more information on the what, why, and how of signals, check out this introductory video. We'll define vehicles as a signal of type vehicle array and set its initial value to an empty array. The selected vehicle signal could be a vehicle, or it could be undefined if the user hasn't yet selected a vehicle. Initially, it's undefined. The quantity signal is a number. Let's set its initial value to 1. That makes sense because if the user selected a vehicle, they probably want to buy at least one. And the total? For that, we use a computed signal. We reference the selected vehicle and use parentheses to read the signal value, then access its cost and credits. 
Notice that the editor automatically added a question mark here. This optional chaining operator only dots into the cost property if the selected vehicle isn't null or undefined. We multiply that cost by the quantity and again read the signal. But we see an error here. Object is possibly undefined. Let's use the nullish coalescing operator to set the cost to zero if that first expression is undefined. That's better. By using a computed signal, any time either of these reference signals change, the computed value is automatically recalculated. Sweet! Lastly, we'll define a computed for the total text color. If the total amount is greater than 50,000 credits, the total text is green, otherwise the text is blue. Again, since it's computed, it's recalculated every time the total signal changes. We now have the set of signals we'll use in our template. Let's create a component next. I'll open a terminal and again use the Angular CLI. NG, G for generate, C for component, vehicle dash selection, dash dash inline dash template to skip generation of a separate HTML file, dash dash inline dash style to skip generation of a separate CSS file, and dash dash skip dash tests to skip the test for this sample application. Opening the Explorer, the CLI created a vehicle selection folder, and in there is our component file. I'll open the file, close Explorer, and close the terminal for more space. For this component, we need the signals from the vehicle service, so we'll inject that service. Next, we define the set of signals that our template needs. We'll bind the selection box options to each vehicle in the array of vehicles. We'll get that from the vehicle service. We'll bind the selection to the selected vehicle signal. We'll get that from the vehicle service as well. Same for our quantity, total, and color. Now we need our template. To save typing, I'll paste in the HTML. Here is our select box with an option for each vehicle in our array of vehicles. Notice that we are using two-way binding to the selected vehicle signal. We aren't reading the signal here, rather we are passing the signal itself because the two-way binding reads and writes to this signal. We are also using two-way binding for the quantity and displaying the vehicle, price, and total. Notice that the total uses property binding to bind the color signal to the style color property. Lastly, since we are using two-way binding in this template, we need to import forms module. If we did everything right, our component is complete. Now we just need to display this component in our application. Notice the selector here, app-vehicle-selection. Open the main.ts file. I'll delete the existing template and instead display our app-vehicle-selection component. And we see an error. This template doesn't know about that component. Since the default in Angular version 19 is now standalone components, each component must import everything it needs. So we'll add an imports property here, which takes an array then import our vehicle selection component. With that, our template is displayed. There is a major piece of this that's missing, retrieving the data for the selection list. Let's go back to the vehicle service. We want to retrieve the data using HTTP client, and we want the returned response in a signal. So let's try out the Rx resource API which is a new experimental feature in Angular version 19. Rx resource can issue an HTTP request and return the retrieved data directly into a signal. Nice! For more information on Rx resource, check out the video, First Look at Angular's New Resource and Rx Resource. We'll define a resource called Vehicles Resource and call Rx Resource. Here at the top, we import Rx resource from at angular slash core slash rxjs dash interop. Rx resource takes an object. 
In its simplest form, we define a loader function, which must return an observable. It's here that we call HTTP GET, passing in the desired URL. Scrolling down, this swappy URL returns a set of metadata, including a results field that is our array of vehicles. We name this interface Vehicle Response, so that's our generic argument. But this gives us the vehicle metadata. We only want the array of vehicles. Let's use the RxJS pipe and map the vehicle response to only the results, which is our array of vehicles. Notice that the vehicle's resource is of type resource ref of vehicle array. That resource ref has a value property that provides the response from our HTTP request as a signal. Excellent. Let's move our vehicle signal declaration under this resource. Then change it to a computed that reads the resource ref value property signal. Hovering over vehicles, it's now a signal of vehicle array or undefined. To prevent having to handle undefined, let's add the nullish coalescing operator and set the result to an empty array if the data has not yet been retrieved. That should be it. In the UI, drop down the selection, and we see our list of vehicles. Yay! Select a vehicle, and we see the vehicle name and price. Adjust the quantity, and our total is automatically calculated. Buy enough, and the total turns green. It works! But look at what happens when I pick another item. The quantity really should reset to 1 when the user selects a different vehicle. Let's fix that. Whenever we want a writable signal to reset based on the value of another signal, we use a linked signal. So let's change our quantity to a linked signal. A linked signal takes an object. The first property of that object is the source signal. Whenever the source signal changes, the quantity signal value is reset. For our case, we want to reset the quantity when the selected vehicle signal changes. The second property is the computation function. This is the function that is re-executed whenever the source signal value changes. We could just reset the quantity to 1 whenever the selected vehicle changed. But let's also handle the case where the selected vehicle is undefined. We'll pass in the selected vehicle. Then if a vehicle is selected, we return 1. Otherwise, we return 0. For more information on Link Signal, check out the video First Look at Angular's new Link Signal. Trying our UI again, our quantity is initially 0 because there is no vehicle selected. If we select a vehicle, the quantity resets to 1. If we change the quantity and then select a different vehicle, the quantity again resets to 1. It works! Going back to the code, notice how declarative our service is. Where we declare each variable, we define exactly how it works, how the quantity adjusts, how the total and color calculate, and how the data is retrieved and manipulated. And look at our component. Yes, it could use some styling, but the entire set of code references signals from our service. Using signals not only improves change detection, they make our code more declarative and better organized. Thanks for watching, and if this content was useful, please like and subscribe.